Howdy everybody, Mike McCoy here. Today we're out here in my garage. Here's my little turning lathe. Little milling machines covered up pure. Sleep. I need to clean it up. I didn't clean it up the last time I used it. It shows. But uh, it just got me to thinking about what this guy Bloomberg said about all the machinist was somebody that knowed the handles to turn, you know, and just like it didn't take nothing to run a turning lathe. And it don't. I mean, turn this handle, go back and forth, turn this and that goes that way. But you gotta know where to turn the handles too. That's the secret of turning, running a turn on turning light. And as far as gray matter, which, you know, being smart, some of the smartest people I've ever met in my life is machinist, problem solving, figuring out how to do something other. Take a piece of metal that didn't have no good way to chuck it in a lay and figuring out how to chuck it and do what they need to do and do it within thousands is uh, pretty fascinating stuff, really is. And, and I've seen it done. And to a certain point, I've done it, you know. It took me a long time to get as proficient in a way as I am now. And I'm by no means a machinist, by no stretch of the imagination. I'm a cobbler. I can make anything I want to make, but it might take me three days to do something it would take a, a full-blown machinist two hours to do. That's the difference. And, you know, it's, it's kind of an insult, but, and I've, I've known some farmers, Ronnie Bridges, I know him. One of the smartest, hardest working men I've ever seen. And uh, come gray matter, he had he had his part in the moor. No doubt about it. Ronnie's dead. That's the only reason I mention his name. But, uh, and you see these videos of these people, like millennial farmer farming thousands of acres and machines and equipment it's worth millions of dollars you can't do something like that and be dumb i mean you just can't but back to why he said that i, I don't think the man said it to downplay on people i think he said it because he's out of touch and it's not just him there's, there's a tremendous amount of our politicians it, I think, is completely out of touch with the common American person, male and female, whether it be machinist, farmer, what have you. For some reason they think it, for lack of a better word, that we're dumb. We ain't got the gray matter that it takes, you know. And uh, that's kind of disheartening. It is to me. Uh, my livelihood and stuff for the last 30 years has been the wood industry, sawmills, logging and such as that. You don't build up the empires that some of these sawmillers just build up from being dumb. Uh, you, you, you just don't do that. You, it, it's impossible. They're, they're, they're extremely intelligent people. And these loggers, I mean, my God, look at David Haley. He, he's millions of dollars worth of equipment there, I'm sure. And they go out and work and it 20 below zero. That's that's a dedication, it's, 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 you just can't 
fan them. And I don't think our politicians can fan them something like that. And there's been no stretch of the imagination done. And, uh, you know, like Logger Wade and his family, well, they, they, they build up a business there that should be the envy of anybody. And, and I've talked to Logger Wade's daddy, and I can promise you he ain't dumb. Logger Wade ain't dumb. And, you know, to have people running for high office that don't recognize this is, is really a disappointment. It, and I'm not, a, I'm not a knocking the Democrats or I ain't a knocking the Republicans. I, I think it's on both sides. I think we've got elites on both sides. It ain't got no idea what the common man in America is up to and what we have to go through. And that's a shame for, you know, it, it, we, we've got a billionaire president, we've got another billionaire that's wanting to be president. And a, I don't think a, a common person would stand the chance of being president, and I don't know anybody would want it if they did have the chance of getting it. And it's, it's sad. I've been watching a lot of about the, you know, where independence and stuff and, and uh, the Revolutionary War and these, they were, these was people that would rival Bloomberg and Trump as far as well, that put it all on the line for the freedom of this country. And I seriously doubt we've got any men made from that metal anymore. And that's, that's really disappointing. It really is. I mean, it, they'd just take their money and take sides with the British or go overseas or whatever. They wouldn't put it on the line like that. And, uh, you know, and as far as politics being rough and tumble, they've been rough and tumble since colonial times. So I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about men that's got backbone, men that's got grit that will stand up for what's right, no matter what, no matter who they hurt, no matter what special interest tells them to do. And you just don't see that anymore. And that's disappointing. I lost a good friend here just a few weeks ago, Mike Fryer, and he was a politician, he was a local politician, but he was made out of that metal. That's why we're such, such a good friend. If he was right, he stood. He stood his ground. He never backed down. And we need more people like that. You know, instead of more, I'm, I'm again wonder if we, we've not got less. And same like the ones that that are like that, like county or state government, when you get this far federal government, it's, it's a different ball game. It like that crowd's just completely out of touch. But now that's just the way I feel. You may feel different. You may feel it, you know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I, and I may not. But I know what I see and I know what I think. And uh, for a man to make a statement in front of the camera like, like Bloomberg did is, is disappointing and uh, I honestly believe he, he, he was sincere when he said it and he was that mistaken about the American people and uh, that's, that, that, ain't, that ain't what we need. I can't, I can't phantom Henry Ford making a statement like that. But, uh, you know, it just is what it is. And don't get me wrong, this is not a political video. Nothing, nothing to do with politics. I don't care who you vote for. Vote for whoever you think will serve you best. But uh, we do need people 
that knows what it's like to be a working man or at least been around working people, common people as I like to say, and know the struggles and the trials and the tribulations that we have because if you're sitting in your big mansion looking down, I don't think you're capable of leading because you don't know who you're leading. So for one thing, Bloomberg underestimated the American farmer and machinist by a country mile. And uh, you, you can't lead people when you act like that. So that's just my thoughts. Well, here's my old bike. Feller's supposed to come and look at it when she and it makes me a little sad, but it don't need to sit here in this garage and gather dust. It's unfair to it. It's unfair to me for having to look at it. That yellow seat goes with it, but there ain't nobody likes my yellow seat, but I've got a big fine Corbin seat around here somewhere it goes with it. But it's a nice old bike. And, uh, I'm thinking somebody needs this thing and somebody's supposed to come look at it. You can't tell much about it. It's got ghost flames in the fender, but pinstripe and all that, but it's covered up in dust. Chromed out. Gear drive on the cams. It's it's got all the goodies. I wouldn't care a bit to light the candle on the thing and head from here to California. And I hate to see it go, but me and mother has had some really good times on that thing and I've got memories. So I can't complain. And it is a good old bike. There's mother. She looks kind of sad looking at it. She feels sorry for me. I feel sorry for her, but she's <laughs> done said. She's done said, fat boy, you ain't riding that bike no more, and I sure ain't riding it, will you? So, and I ain't letting her ride it to nobody else. So I guess that's that. So I'll get off from here.